John 15 begins this way. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will not even be more, it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. This is through my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Napa Valley is where we grow a lot of grapes for wine. since we don't have wine in for communion in the Methodist Church because the Methodist Church is the home of the Women's Christian Temperance Unit, Union. And it was declared in our statement of purpose of the United Methodist, well, the Methodist Church, which became the United Methodist Church. Actually, just 50 years ago, we became a United Methodist Church. Up until then, we were just Methodists, wandering around not united. <laughs> we became united because there was a merger between the Evangelical United Brethren Church and the Methodist Church. And so we got to use the United out of their name and the Methodist out of ours. They said it was a merger, but they were about one fiftieth of the size of the Methodist Church. But we know we swallowed them up. <laughs> I like to say that at home because we were married in the Evangelical United Brethren Church. So I'm not sure I have a, I'm not sure my marriage is legal because it wasn't Methodist. <laughs> but so far it's held up pretty good. The word united is 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 a is a a word that's classic. And it's a word that may be stretched in just another 10 days, the Council on Bishops will issue a statement of progress on moving the church forward. There's a, a great, great schism in the church about uh, LBGT, I'm going to get that up, whatever, LGBTQ, whatever. Uh, it's, it's there. And the church doesn't really know what to do with it. There are parts of the United Methodist Church in areas where to be identified as one of those means that you will be put to death immediately. And those those areas of the United Methodist Church want it to still be considered a, a very grave, grave sin and unforgivable in, within the church. Other parts of it are pretty liberal. <coughs> And they think that maybe those people are really honestly people. So there will be, there's a problem in moving forward because our book of discipline says one thing and we do a lot of things that disagree with that. And we need, the church wants to make an official policy. So we're having an extra general conference, a two year, which instead of the annual or the four year, so they can get on with it. The most important consideration we have as a local church, <coughs> excuse me, out of this road, is that we are who we are. I find us to be fairly close to Christ. He draws us nearer all the time. We can be loving in his name. 
to anyone who needs to be loved in his name. And that's a, that's pretty much the the purpose or the or the reason for the gospel today. <clears throat> I started mentioning Napa Valley right off the bat. Before Napa Valley grew grapes, there were none there. Grapes are not natural in this part of the world, in the in the Western Hemisphere. The grapes that they grow in in Napa Valley came from France. And to put to move grapes from France to Napa Valley, they cut two foot sections of grapevine. Kept them very dry, shipped them over by boat. Boat went all the way around the southern tip of South America. Put them in the ground and watered them and they had grapes. Not too long ago, there was a disease that hit the, the French vineyards. And the California vineyards cut two feet length of grapevine, put them on an airplane. We're, we're more modern than the French were. And sent them back to replenish those vines. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you go into a vineyard, the vine is that heavy looking stuff with bark on it. There are no grapes on it. Out of the vines come branches. And out of the end, at the end of the branches are the tendrils where the grape, the bunches of grape grow. And that's what we are. We're out here at the end. God is immobile. God is powerless in individual lives unless someone brings the message. <clears throat> unless someone tends the grapes. Unless someone actually bears the fruit of his word. And that's the message that Christ was teaching. We've been studying Acts in the, in the Thursday morning Bible study. And we did the, the study on this thing between the, the, the unit and the Christian. And it's, it, it's, it's a great story. Suddenly, he's walking along the road beside the road and the unit pulls up. He's a general. He, covered, he commands an army and he's got questions. So he pulls up alongside and opens it. No, he doesn't open the door. You get in on the back. <laughs> we get modernized it a little bit if we want to. Because the story that's in the Bible is the way it was presented. We're not always sure the way it's presented is exactly the way it happened. Okay. The unit is driving, you know, the unit was probably important enough that he had a driver. This would be an, a, 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 a then had limousine. It would have been a big chariot. And the, and the eunuch would have been studying the word. And he said, Why, what does this word mean? And he was told it means that you can be saved if you're baptized. There's water, I'm here, here's the word, can I be baptized? Yeah, let's do it. And he came up out of the water and the Holy Spirit touched him. And so it disappeared. See, that's the way it's presented. Philip just got out of the chariot. Didn't get back in when they moved on. But he went around preaching and teaching and so forth. But it makes a whole lot better story if he just disappeared. Then we get the mystery of God. And it becomes almost like the magic of God. And, and the danger is that we get so caught up in the, the mysticism of the things that happen that we fail to see what the message is about. There are no coincidences in your relationship with God. We do things and we wonder, why did we do that? And look what happened because we did it. And that's God at work presenting us 
with an opportunity. Now, I'm, I'm not a, a predispositionist. I don't believe that everything that's going to happen in your life is determined the moment you're born. We're not predisposed to be evil or to be good. We're predisposed to be real. And God will lead us to the places where he wants us to be real, where we can, where we can make a difference in people's lives. <clears throat> We're here, Nancy and I are here, because we saw a, hot, a sign on the highway a long time ago that said, you know, pay attention because this is way out of character, right? <laughs> Country club living on a championship golf course. <laughs> now, is that out of character or not? <laughs> and we stopped to look and we wound up moving here. We came to Vegas to play golf and we couldn't because it was a consumer electronics show. No place to stay in Vegas. So we drove that rotten road down from Vegas and that thing that comes over the mountains, uh, used to come over the mountains to uh, Laughlin. And Casino Drive was not even two lanes, it was just a dirt path between the casinos with potholes you could lose your car in. And we bought a, bought a lot and built a house. No intention ever in our mind of being here. Well, I'm glad I am. Because God has presented me with an opportunity, hopefully, to make a difference in some people's lives. I don't mean you guys. You guys are hopeless. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All them other people that we're working on. I am the vine, you are the branches. Somebody's got to get the work done around here. Because God expects us not to be willing to just be. God expects us to make a difference in the life around us. And it doesn't make any difference to the people here around us or the people sitting here what the general church does about their problems. We have to take care of our problems. And if we have one, I need to know about it. But I don't see this as a problem. Except we need more ideas. We need more dreams. We need more, more calls for us to do for people. Uh, we, we bask in glory with our food pantry. It's, it's a, a mark of honor among the the St. Mary's people, what a wonderful place it is and how nice it is and how well it's run and how many people we touch and, and all of those accolades. But there are people who aren't coming to the food pantry who need Jesus Christ, who may be reading the Word and saying, what is it? What does this mean? And they need someone to say, it means God loves you enough to save you but you must be baptized in the Word, in the Spirit. We can argue all we want about how to baptize. My, one of my favorite conversations about baptism was in Baraboo, the Latter-day Saints built the temple. And before it was sanctified, they had tours so us outsiders could see what it looked like. And their meeting area was carpeted with basketball lines in the carpet. They played basketball on the carpet. They had a half court. And underneath the basket were two big double doors. When you opened them, there was a baptismal font. And I said to the young man who, the earnest young man who was explaining all of the symbolism I said to him, when you people talk about a slam dunk, you mean it. <laughs> Which was not considered funny by our <laughs> I never got invited back. <laughs> but isn't it amazing? Some of the things are so simple. You can take a piece of a grapevine and put it in the ground and it will produce fruit. 
if you nurture it, if you feed it, if you love it. People, people will flourish and produce fruit. <clears throat> Nurture it if you love it, if you feed it. We have, a, we have a job to do. We have a lot of work to do. Because there are a lot of people who aren't sitting in these seats. There are a lot of people who don't know that we do the food pantry because we love God and God loves the people who come to us. They don't know. We have a lot of work to do. He is in us and we are in Him. We have a lot of work.